Hey everybody, it's Tom from MC Things here, and today we're going to show you how to quickly set up a temperature sensing network using your MC modules. So what I'm going to do is take three of them, set them up at different areas around my property, have them take a temperature at different intervals, and relay that information back to me for analysis. Uh, first thing I want to quickly go over though is what does and how does the MC Things platform work? So it starts with an MC Gateway, and this is the, the device that bridges the cloud and the modules and vice versa. So information comes in through the gateway, gets dispersed to the modules, telling it what different programs, what you want them to do, and the devices will send information back out with relaying the informational data, all that type of stuff. Now the cool part here is the network that the gateway and the modules talk on. So this is our very own LP LAN network. It's called a low power local area network. It allows each gateway to connect up to a thousand modules, and the gateway also has up to 200 meter, which is about 650 feet radius range. So imagine having a gateway in your house, your business, all sorts of different applications, each one connected to up, up to a thousand modules, potentially doing a thousand different things. You know, it's sensing temperature, motion, all the other sensors you can come up to. Maybe you are controlling devices with them as well. So you can learn more from about the MC Things platform and everything else we do at our website, www.mcthings.com. So the next step in our project here is we're going to go set up our IFT recipe so we can get the information from the modules and do something interesting with it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is set up our IFT recipe. So I've gone to ift.com, and when you get there, you're gonna have to set up an account. It's free to do, um, but I highly, you're gonna have to do it to do this project. I highly recommend checking out this website and this service anyways. There's some really cool different recipes that you can do with all sorts of different devices and other platforms that are out there. So I've already set all that up. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get set up is remember or have access to the unique key that IFT is gonna give you. That's basically the address to your recipes from your devices. So I'm gonna to go to my recipes. I'm gonna create a recipe. And we're gonna use the maker channel. So if this and that, so if this happens, we're gonna pick on the maker channel. And this is a, a channel that allows incoming web requests to the service. So I'm gonna, the event name is actually going to be outside temp. It's one of the places I'm gonna put one of the modules. So if that comes in, then what happens? And today we're actually gonna use Google Drive. And these are the four actions that you can take with Google Drive once that trigger has happened. What we're gonna do is actually add a row to a spreadsheet. So I've clicked on that. I'm gonna call the spreadsheet name outside temp. Here's all the information that's gonna come in, the date, the name of the event, and the values, and it's gonna create a path within my Google Drive. So I'm gonna create that action, confirm I'm doing everything I want here, and I'm gonna create my recipe. So right now, if I go to my all my recipes here, all of them, these are all the ones I have, all of them are turned off except for the one I just created, and just for now, I'm gonna turn that off. So now what we're gonna do is actually go to our MC Studio and program our modules to bring us information in so we can complete this recipe. Okay, everybody, so now we're in MC Studio and the first thing I'm gonna do is go up to my devices and just make sure I'm all connected. So I am connected to my gateway and I'm also connected to the module that I wanna put this script onto. So here is the actual code that we're gonna use to check the temperature and have it relate back to us. Um, what we're doing here is we're calling it temp setup. That's the class name. It's an event that's gonna happen every 30 seconds. It's gonna check the temperature using the high accuracy temperature sensor that's built into the module. And this is a really important line here. This is the coding that's gonna push the information from the LP LAN to IFT to your unique code. So this is where you're gonna to need to enter your own unique code there. And also the trigger name. So both these items are very important. The trigger name, as you remember, is what I also call the IFT recipe that we just set up. It's called Outside Temp. So I'm actually going to copy all this and I'm gonna start a new project. And just so you know, guys, we are going to post that that code in the comments, we call this outside temp, in the comments of this video so you can uh, use it yourself. But you feel free to pause the video and write this out so you can use it right away and, and program your modules to do this. So again, we're raising an event every 30 seconds, check the temperature, send it to this specific key with this specific trigger. Now, you'll notice when you're writing code, if there's anything underlined, it's kind of like word. Something isn't right. Now this word is spelled right, but it's missing the variable. It doesn't know what I mean when I say temperature. So this is very important. You need to go down, add the library code, temperature. So this adds another tab and it has all the information. 
Now this code knows what I mean by temperature because it's pulling the information from this data sheet, I guess you could think of it that way. So that's all good. Um, the last thing I'm gonna do is just quickly set up another fun little uh, part of this. I'm gonna set up to blink the LED green light uh, every, oops, I can spell, raise every 500 milliseconds. LED green equals not LED green. Okay, so what I actually did here is I set up so that every 500 milliseconds, oops, this is done wrong, as you can see. So every 500 milliseconds the green light's going to turn on and then for 500 milliseconds it's going to turn off and then so on and so forth. So I'm going to use it just to quickly as a, at a glance I can see the light going everything I know is fine. So now this is all saved I've got everything good there's no uh, problems here. What I'm actually going to do is save this I am going to build the application as well. So building it is incredibly important. Even when you're just testing it, you, you should always save and build the application. You cannot actually implement the script onto the module without building the, the application first. So I've done that. Now I click on this device and load the pro or this button and load the program into the device itself. So there we go, the script has been successfully loaded. My device is now disconnected. So now what I'm gonna do is actually go and place all my three modules. As you can guess, I went ahead and set up this uh, different script on all three of them ahead of making this video so we could do it quick. I'm gonna go set these up right now and then we're gonna come back and have a look at the data that's incoming from these devices. Okay, so now that we have the modules placed out around everywhere, I've got them out, one in my garage, I've got one outside, and I've got one upstairs. So I've gone back to my IFT recipe page, and I went and actually turned on my recipes. So the outside temperature one, the upstairs temperature one, and my garage temperature one is now turned on. So again, what's happening, it's getting information from the modules and putting that information into a spreadsheet right now. So to prove this out, I'm gonna close this and move this over. And it'd be pretty cool. You can actually watch the incoming live real-time messages coming from the modules. So uh, again, this is coming in every 30 seconds. There's a new one from the upstairs temperatures, you know, relatively warm. This is all in Celsius. Outside is a little chilly. What I'm gonna be more interested about is as, the, as it gets later and the temperature drops outside, how quickly does my garage drop to a lower temperature? I guess essentially how efficient uh, and, and well insulated is my garage. So this is incoming right now. The other thing I've done here, I've done a little bit of Excel work in the background and I am putting together a temperature grid here. So uh, already it's building data based off the information I have in those other spreadsheets. And if you watch it, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but you'll be able to actually see it moving. So what I'm gonna do is actually keep this on. We're gonna watch it go for a couple hours and see how this graph uh, persists. Okay guys, so there we go. Pretty cool live graph uh, from the three different areas around my house measuring temperature and watching it for a couple hours. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, feel free to use that project uh, and we're excited to see your results as well. We are gonna be starting a forum here shortly where we will have different examples, use cases. We wanna have everybody submit their user projects um, and, and start a discussion on what else the MC modules can do. And, and really the project we just did is the very tip of the iceberg. You can use it for so much different stuff. So I highly recommend going to our website, learning a little bit more, sending us an email at info at mcthings.com and use the hashtag MC Innovations on social media platforms to show off your project, show off, you know, what are you doing with MC modules and, and the MC Things platform. That's it for today. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon.